Hey, it's John at Tinderbox Arts. So this is an old Tama Imperial Star 8-inch Tom uh, from the 1980s. This is the original Imperial Star. And I'm going to use this as an example about how to repair a delaminated drum. Now, if you look at the inside of this drum, it's got like a painted surface on it. Don't be put off by that. It's called Zola Coat, I think it was. And it was just a special kind of paint they applied. Uh, to the inside of the drums back in the day the effort was to try to prevent moisture from you know causing seasonal movement What I want to talk about today is this delamination now I'm not talking about the cover here that actually has some issues too, but what I am talking about is Right here. I'm going to get a close-up in a second, but the layers of the drum the laminations One of them has actually started to come apart now. It's not a huge uh, deal right now but if I let it go and start to play this drum again, it's going to get worse. Okay, here's a close-up of what I'm talking about here. I'll use a screwdriver to point to it. So this section right here, you can see there's a gap there, and that's just one of the sections that, that have delaminated. Now, again, as an example, this is really not that bad. Um, believe me, I've seen much, much worse, and this was not damage that was caused by a drop or anything like that. It's just old age, really. So this is not rocket science. Basically, we're going to glue up uh, that little section there and clamp it together. It's just how you do it is really the question. So first thing is going to come up is what type of glue to use. Now there are arguments for other glues than what I'm going to use here and I'm not saying this is necessarily the glue you're going to use every single time, but it is a good choice. Type Bond 3 is well known within the woodworking community and uh, the company that makes this does actually recommend this for this type of situation. So it's used in drum manufacturing, actually in skateboard manufacturing and other places where you have wood laminations put together with glue. Um, it holds up well under concussive uh, effects. So you know, when you're really banging on this drum, this glue is going to hold up well. Other wood glues would not hold up as well. Having said that, there is an argument to be made for this particular repair being such a tiny area here. You know, what about other glues such as like a super glue style or an epoxy. And there is some argument to be made for that uh, because it is so small. If this were a larger repair we were making, in other words, the delamination was much bigger or longer, I would definitely stick with this. But because it is so small, potentially you could look at some of those other options. But for me, I've had a lot of success with this uh, glue in a lot of different situations, so I'm just going to continue to use it. Now the other problem is clamping. So if you just look at this little gap right here, you'll see I can just squeeze this with my fingers and it will come together. So it doesn't take a lot of clamping pressure, but we want that clamping pressure to be even. And if we just use a single clamp and nothing else, we have a good chance of marking up the outside covering here or even the inside, and we might not have even pressure. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to get over that fact. And if this were a bigger repair we were making, what I'm about to show you would be even more important. So very simply, I have a piece of scrap wood here. It could be anything. This happens to be pine. It could be anything. It's really not that critical. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take a good section of the drum. This does not have any problems. And I'm going to put it down, hold it in place here. And I'm going to mark the outside. And I'm going to mark the inside. That represents, if you can see that, the... Um, inside and outside of the drum. Now I need to cut out this area here, and there's a few different tools you could use for this. Now if you're a woodworker like me, you have a bandsaw, that's great, go ahead and use it, but probably most people don't have this. If you're not a woodworker at all and you have nothing, you can go out and buy a coping saw for under $10, and this will do the job perfectly fine. Finally, you have the in-between choice, I guess, which is an electric jigsaw, which will work great for the problem as well. With my two sections cut out, I'll just use a little sandpaper to kind of clean off the edges here, any chips that I made. Now here's an interesting wrinkle. I made those marks when I made this thing from the good side. When I flip this, and it fits well by the way, when I flip this around, this is where I need to make the repair, it doesn't actually fit as well. And that's because this shell has actually flattened out in this area, which is understandable because right here 
is where um, the hardware for connecting to the stand is located. So basically the shell is flattened out over time. So if it's not a perfect fit, it's not the end of the world. Really what you're trying to do is just protect this area right here where we'll be clamping and provide something close to the curve. Okay, I've set up the clamping mechanism here. Just It's not tight, it's just loose in there. If I touch it too much, it'll fall off. But I just want to have it ready. And this right here is the edge of the clamp. I'll pull back later and show you. But I want to get this glue in here. Now, to get the glue in here, I mean, obviously you're just going to squeeze a bunch out. But you want to give it enough time to soak in there and get into the crevice. Now you can use something like this, which is, it's called an acid brush. Plumbers use it. Uh, it will be in the plumbing section of your, uh, you know, Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. Or a paintbrush, a small paintbrush, or even just your fingers. You can work your fingers and get that in there as well. To clean this up before we clamp it, just a, a damp rag, a, a towel is all I'm using. And I'm just going to poke around in here and try to get that in there. I don't want to get it on the outside cover, so I just want to make sure I get it deep enough, and gravity will help a little bit. All right, once I'm sure I've got that in there, I'm going to give it an initial wipe just to get the excess off. All right, and now I'm going to squeeze this clamp together, and we want to see some squeeze out of the glue. I right, put some pressure on that. I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera, but there is some glue squeeze out right here, which is just exactly what we want to see. Let me just wipe that off now. Now I'm going to leave that clamp on for a good, you know, 24 hours. Uh, it'll start to set up pretty quickly, but for full strength, I want to give it some time. If I pull back here a little bit, you see here's the whole clamp. There's different styles of clamps. You could use a C clamp. Um, it really doesn't matter. As long as you have enough pressure to squeeze that gap closed, you're good. Now, if you have a much bigger gap, let's say, you know, it was from here to here, uh, you know, inches, and it was much wider, in that case, you might have to use multiple clamps, and in that case, you'll have to be more exacting, probably, with this little uh, jig that I made here. Okay, it's been overnight. Let's take a look. I think uh, I'm trying to see where the repair even was. It's somewhere in this area right here, I think. Let me take this clamp off and just see where we are. All right, we look like we're in good shape. It held it's somewhere in this area. I can't really even tell where it was. Now, if you open this back up and the repair does not hold, you may be able to glue it a second time. But the more you try to stick glue in there and it doesn't work, uh, the less success you're going to have. So if you get to a point where you've glued it once and the crack opens back up, you may just have to live with that crack. And instead of trying to squeeze it back together, you can fill it with an epoxy, most likely, and just let it be, you know, open and there's nothing more you're going to do about it. But in most cases, you can repair it like we've done here.